Hey folks, this is Kyle Vile coming at you with another video. I want to come here and sow some seeds of encouragement um, and just kind of see where the Spirit of God wants to do. Uh, I am passionate about encouraging others and just kind of revealing truth. And um, so here we go. Are you ready? So even in Proverbs talks about guarding your heart. Your heart is very important. It's where your spirit lies. It's actually where in the born again experience, the Holy Spirit dwells. Your Holy Spirit doesn't dwell in your mind. Your, the Holy Spirit dwells in your heart. So God actually communicates to you in your heart. God drops things into your heart. And now our mind needs to be transformed and renewed by the word of God, by the spirit of God, actually listening to the voice of God. And so what happens, there's many different voices in the world um, and from other people, many different influences. Um, so we have a lot of voices. And so um, it says to guard your heart. It's very important to guard your heart. And let God renew and uh, transform your heart and have his work in your heart. So how's my ponytail over here? I got so much hair going on, I had to put in a ponytail. So the Lord wants to bless you because God is an enforcer of blessings. Um, and the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal your blessings. So that's why it's so important to engage in relationship with the Lord. And I'm just going to, you know, talk, you know, scripture like 633, Matthew 633 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all else will be added to you. Meaning everything will be added to you as long as you seek God first and you seek his righteousness. So doing the right thing and it's not just like what you think is the right thing is what God says is the right thing. So it is important to get to know God's will. You know, something else that came to mind before I was thinking about the scripture that also says, the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. So in my mind, the way I also see it is, um, God wants to make you rich. And it doesn't even have to be just material wealth, but it can be. But God wants to make you rich because all, you know, he has glo a glory of riches and supplies um, that are never ending. And God will, can make a way if um, God can, uh, can, Get the resources to you in this physical realm. He will guide things and put things into place so that these resources can get to you. In fact, it could be already planned out. But the, the thing here is that the scripture says that he adds no sorrow to it. So God wants to give you without the sorrow. So I think if you're trying to get rich and trying to be wealthy materialistically, but yet you have sorrow that comes with it, I believe you're outside of God's will. But if we seek God and his will and his righteousness, I believe God will add things in your life without the sorrow part. So it's still going to come back down to the your relationship, your personal relationship with the Lord. Um, God wants to bless you with abundant life. Jesus says, I came to give life and life more abundantly. So God is an enforcer of life and life in abundance. And so, in actually, I was reading and I shared it. First Thessalonians chapter five, eighteen says, "This is your God's perfect will for you to be thankful." Tomorrow's Thanksgiving, actually. And so, what part of God's perfect will is for you to be thankful for what God has given us? God created you. God even put talents and gifts to you. And another scripture, it also says that uh, God gives gifts without repentance so it's not like you had to repent and turn to god and it, it's al it's already been given so the gifts and talents that you actually have has already been given to you without even you trying to do something to um receive those gifts to even to repentance and we're called to repentance yes we're called to engage with god in relationship but god is a generous god he's a giving god he always gives and he already gave you gifts from when you were born he already designed you. Anyways, he already has plans for you. He has good plans. God only has good plans for you. Uh, so you have to believe and receive it. 
and and start walking in his will and start walking with him god, it's, it's supposed to be a walk with him it's a relationship just as adam and eve in the garden god will come down and walk with adam and eve they would talk to him and god would talk with them so um fellowship is important fellowship with each other is important we're like designed and made i'm a student of psychology i went to nyu i studied i know and experience experiential knowledge i know the experience too we're meant to be in community we're meant to be in relationship we're meant to have fellowship one of my biggest conclusions was just was actually about community we're meant to be here for each other with each other even god says right in the beginning of in genesis in the beginning of the bible it says man um is not good for man to be alone that's why he made him a wife and another scripture in proverbs it says um he who finds a wife finds a good thing he doesn't say he who finds a girlfriend finds a good thing he who finds a wife so a wife is precious there's commitment to it is is a long-term fellowship um but it's a good thing it is a good thing to be married god instituted marriage from the beginning god created man and woman in his image we're made in his image we're the only creatures of all creation that are actually made in his image not even the angels of the lord are made in his image it's actually mankind that's made in his image you see angels are spirit beings now we're also spirit beings but we're also we got a soul and we also have a body now this body is you know one day is going to decay so even if tomorrow i died in the body that means i'd be with the lord so i have nothing to lose in this life in fact because i lost my identity of who i thought i was and i gained my right identity in christ i've gained everything so if i died tomorrow i would actually be with the lord and so i can really never lose because you see um in this world in the fallen state of the world we have death but god actually all wants life he, we were meant for eternal life to be with him and this is actually a really important perspective this life this temporary life is like a speck of dust in the grand scheme of all eternal life so you want to be on the on the light on the side where there is eternal life so jesus is the way to eternal life he is eternal life and when you accept jesus into your heart because of what he did on the cross he died for us to bear the weight of our sin to bear the weight of our suffering um and and he took death itself on on himself and he exemplified demonstrated and showed the power of god resurrection power we will resurrect in christ but it is in christ so we have to follow him jesus does say though deny yourself and pick up your cross daily so sometimes we think uh, an identity of who we think we are that's when we start getting in our self world and jesus says deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me so just follow jesus and you'll have life and life more abundantly but sometimes that has to go in opposition of the world and so what happens is we think happiness even is a certain way of thinking to the world the world has a way of thinking but god's way is always a higher way in a different way i knew i know a man who for example he he prays and he has a relationship with god god spoke to him and said pay this person's mortgage off and he's like i'm trying to survive i'm trying to get my own bills i'm barely you know, floating by well he was obedient and willing he took his money he paid for that man's mortgage and not too long after somebody was spoken by the lord to pay for his whole house his whole house was paid for but he was obedient to pay for someone else's mortgage and in turn god made an had already planned another way but you see we have to be willing and obedient by faith and we have to listen to the voice of the lord and like i said too we listen to the voice of the lord in our heart and it helps that we know the word of god so we our minds can be framed so when god does drop something into our heart we have the frame of the word of god to know what god is saying and speaking and what he wants to do with us so god does have a will and he wants to do mighty and great things with you um so you know it's it's just funny how the world has a certain way of doing things and thinking things but god's ways are always going to be higher and it's unfortunate that we have all these different 
concepts and ideas and philosophies like you got to find happiness this way and happiness that way but i'm telling you but from experience god's peace is the perfect peace jesus peace is the perfect peace jesus says that the uh, world gives a fragile peace. So even if you think you that you're in some kind of peace with the world, that peace is fragile. The only way you can have unshakable peace is with Jesus Christ. Now this whole entire year, everything that has happened, I've actually been blessed more than anything else. And I have a perfect peace with God with through the mediation of Jesus Christ. I have Jesus in my heart. And I also guard my heart from the messages of the world and what this, this, and that says and blah 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 now i have very good perspective because i got i got pretty educated i went to nyu i got a master's degree i have very a lot of experience and i have the word of god in me i have the spirit of god in me i i can discern i can discern spiritual things i can judge things well with discernment because god helps me with that and because that's what i prayed for too now and on the outside somebody who's carnally minded in the flesh you actually cannot judge me and you may have a hard time discerning what i'm saying because of the carnal nature of the mind of the of the natural of the world you ha there has to be a born again experience by the spirit and i can't force you to have a born again experience i can only plant seeds but it's supposed to be a personal relationship with god god actually causes the born again experience by the word of God, though, the word of God gets activated. People activate others. There's something in people that comes out and touches people's lives. So it's good for us to be obedient to God, what he has for us and to do what he wants us to do. So and in a way, God also just wants a personal, intimate relationship with him. You know, God is, has a personality. You know, God is a person. You know, we're made in the image of God. We're actually meant to be in relationship with the Lord. I talk to God every single day because I have a prayer life. I'm I'm praying every single day. I'm praying for others every day. I'm praying out my future every day in a sense. But I, you know, I less, I don't pray as much for myself. However, I do say in the beginning of the day sometimes, I'm, say, I'm saying that today's going to be a great day, you know. And then guess what happens? A great day happens. Um, it's the power of faith. It's the power of God. It's awesome. It's a good life. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you by experiential knowledge. Um, but it also says too, that um, God is not mocked. Um, whoever you, you, you reap what you sow. So sowing is so important. It's, it's like farming, it's like planting, it's like producing fruit. It, it's such a spiritual principle. It, it, the Bible talks about it all the time. Some people take that as a negative, like, you know, God is not mocked, you sow, you reap what you sow. They take it as a bad thing. Yes, if you plant bad seeds, sure. But it's actually supposed to be showing a good thing if you sow good seeds. So if you are generous to somebody else, another part of scripture says, the generous will never go hungry. So when you're always giving, God will take care of all your needs. God loves to take care of you, but he has to use your your um, seeds. You have to sow. Same thing with the word of God. When the word of God gets sown into you, that, that seed uh, produces a crop. But it needs to be watered, and there needs to be fertilizing. There needs to be a growth, and there's a process to it. So even as I'm speaking life, I'm speaking the word of God, which is um, uh, like a, a double-edged sword that's sharper and active. It's sharp and active or so. It cuts through spirit and soul. So the seed is the word of God. When we actually meditate on it daily, even in the Psalms, Psalms 1, it says, Blessed are those who do not um, listen to the counsel of the ungodly, saying, don't listen to ungodly people. Don't listen to sinners. But it says to meditate on the word of God, and you'll be like a plant um, uh, or like a tree, planted uh, uh, by the by the waters and you will flourish and produce fruit in every season so no matter what happens every year year by year month by month you'll be producing fruit if you meditate on the word of god if you meditate on the spirit of god if you have intimate relationship you continuously seek the will of god seek the um seek the kingdom of god and, and his righteousness and all else will be added to you so things will be added to you you got to believe that god wants to prosper you too that is a covenant relationship. God prospered Abraham. It said that Abraham was very rich. Isaac was rich. 
Jacob was rich. We have the benefit of the covenant of the Old Testament, and we have the new wine through Jesus Christ. So Jesus wants to bless you. So God bless you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.